Praise the Lord. This is a uh, Pastor Johnson coming before you from the church, but we still today are not having uh, live in-person services, but we're having a broadcast just the same. Glad to be in the house of God. Glad to know what God is doing in the world and glad to be a part of God's plan for this end time revival. Praise God. We're passionate about God, about people, about doing the work of God. Because in the final analysis, nothing else really matters. Nothing else that we endeavor to put our time, our efforts, our energies into really matters. Like doing things for God. Making sure that we're a part of the flow of the Spirit of God. And we are the hands, the tools that God uses to bring about his purpose. There's no better endeavor to be involved in in the world. You know, it's not just the preacher. It's everybody that God has placed his spirit in. Everybody that God's spirit speaks to. If you consider yourself a child of God, every day God has a mission for you. Every day God has a mission for me. Praise God. And we want to talk about that a little bit today. We want to ask three questions, three important questions. I think that, that dominate... You know, you know, in one sense or another, perhaps they underlie the, uh, the efforts that we make, the things that we engage in, the things that we endeavor to do. Praise God. I don't know about you, but my driving force is to please God. Am I doing everything that I should be doing every second of the day? Perhaps not. And that's, that's part of the challenge. That's part of us becoming what God wants us to be recognizing the fact that there is a higher calling. There is something that I can attain to. I have not reached it. I have not arrived. Every day I strive to get to that place, to, to do that thing that God wants me to do, to be pleasing to God. Hallelujah. And today we want to spend some time talking about that because I think it's important for us to ask ourselves these, these questions and other ones. In our lives. To allow the spirit of God to speak to us. I don't know about you. But I need God to speak to me every once in a while. I need to hear what God has to say. I need to see things from his perspective. And not just my own. Because so so often in life. We, we can become distracted by, by what, what uh, pleases us. Or what gets our attention. Or what appeals to us. Because God made us all human beings. Uh, that, that have a. A liking. We take a liking to what pleases us. We want to please this flesh. And there's nothing wrong with that in perspective. But when we get that out of perspective and that becomes the primary focus for our existence, there becomes a problem. So today I want to, I want to ask you these questions. First of which, what are you passionate about? What lights your fire? What is the thing? You know, these are kind of rhetorical questions, but really something for us to internalize and to think about this. But what are you passionate about? What gets you excited? What do you strive to want to do and to, to become? And what is it? What is that thing in your life? What is that one thing? If your life boiled down to something the interest that has your focus and attention. What is that? Praise God. You can answer that and only you can answer. Maybe some people from the outside can see some of the direction and the things that you speak and the things that you say. And we can, we can gain an understanding and an idea perhaps and surmise what that may be. But only you, only you know what that truly is. And the Spirit of God is asking Hallelujah. God is talking today to your heart and asking you that question. What is it? What is it that has your passion? What has you wrapped up? What has your attention? What has your desire? What has attracted you? What is it? What is it? What gets you up in the morning? What gets you to have your zest for life? What is that thing? And you know something? If you can answer that question, say there's nothing. You know, that may be a problem as well. A lack of motivation, a lack of understanding who you are. A lack of understanding of what it is that God wants you to do or, or what it is that you can do. Some people don't have that passion. 
And you start to go in the opposite direction because then you start to lose the value of who you are. And Satan would love to distract you with that. He would love to depress you with that. He would love to tell you that you don't have any value, that you can't do anything. Because if he can make you think that you have no value and you cannot do anything, then why even be here? And he starts working that on you. And believe me, he's worked that on many people until the point that they finally reasoned with him and said, yes, why am I here? Satan would love nothing better than to lessen God's effectiveness through you. Because everybody that God created, he doesn't make mistakes. Never made a mistake. Every single person has a usage, has something they can do that's beneficial to his kingdom. And that's going to put satisfaction in their life. You know, because when you accomplish anything, there is a natural satisfaction with that. You know, it's like completing a circle. If you left the circle half completed, you'd still see the, the parts that were completed. You probably wouldn't even notice them as much as you see that one spot that's not completed. And that's how it is when we accomplish things. We finish the circle. And there's an excitement. There is a, a feeling of accomplishments. You know, as you do that. And God wants us all to be involved in an endeavor. You know, life is the spice of life to be involved in something, praise God, that's significant to you. And you get to, to, to have those moments that you've completed something. We all need that. What do you look forward to? What do you spend your time doing? What is it that you spend most of your time thinking about? These are the things. These are the passions. These are the things that your life, at least to you, consists of. And I'm challenging you this morning. What is it? What is it? Does the devil have you distracted thinking about things that you should not be thinking about? Or focusing on areas and, and making those things the most important thing in your life when they are just a small segment of your life. Is he doing that to you? Is he speaking to you? Have you gotten yourself so involved in side matters of life? And Satan has elevated those things to the most important thing. And, and, and they're to the place that they're squeezing out all of the other areas of your life. That's, has Satan tricked you like that? Has he moved in? You have to ask yourself. God knows you know. Praise God. I'm not with you 24 hours a day. You are with yourself and God is with you. You know there's a challenging question. There's a probing question that's going out this morning. That's saying to your heart. What are you passionate about? What gets you up in the morning? What do you look forward to? What do you spend your time doing? Where are your passions? Jesus said in Matthew 6 and 21, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. What you place value on, that's where your heart's at. Is Jesus competing with anything in your life? Is Jesus competing with any value in your life? Praise God. Next question is, what are you here to do? A lot of people have dreams. A lot of people have ambitions. And you know, I believe that dreams and, and ambitions, I believe that stuff comes from God. This is one of the motivating things that pushes us to do things in life. And there's nothing wrong with that. As a matter of fact, it's, 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 it's a great thing to be motivated because you accomplish things when there's, when there's motivation, when there's a desire to do. It gets you up in the morning. It gets you focused on what you're trying to accomplish. Those are great things to have that, in that, that desire to endeavor to do something. You know, things don't get accomplished in this earth unless somebody has a desire to do it. And when somebody has a desire to do it, distractions and other things that could come to keep them from that goal, they push aside and they, they get focused. And the ones that are able to focus amidst all the other distractions of life are the ones that accomplish things that we then can take note of. 
So I ask you, what are you here to do? Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes rather, 12 and 13 says this. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. When it all boils down to what matters and what our overall goal should be is to fear God. Fear God. Make God, whatever's important to God, what God says, the, what our life centers around. Fear God and to keep his commandments. That means I'm in love with what God wants. That means I have to get into his, I have to know what God thinks. I have to get into his word. And I have to spend time praying, talking to him. Because when I do that, then I'll get that passion. I'll get that heart that God had for souls. The Bible says he looked at some cities and he was moved with compassion. And that's what God wants us to be moved with. That compassion for souls. You know, some of it's very direct. You were just witnessing and doing Bible studies. And other times, God may have you endeavoring to do something. Maybe you're going to school. Maybe you're, you're wanting to do something that's perhaps not as direct, but something that has a bigger scope or bigger plan. Or whatever you, you want to do in your life, whatever it is that you desire to do, God wants to be able to use that to use you. Praise God. I believe dreams and desires and plans and goals and ambition, this stuff comes from God. Because God wants your life to go well. He gave us some, some advice. He says, well, not advice, just a commandment. He says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother that it may be well with you. So there's this desire that life go well. We all have a desire. And God has a desire also to connect with us that our life would go well. So God's interested in your plans, in your future, and what you're trying to do. Does God get a say in what you plan? This is a question. Does God get a say? Or do you just set your plans? The Bible says a man devises his way and the Lord directs his steps. A good man's steps. In another place it says are ordered of the Lord and he delighteth in his way. I want God to direct my plans, my steps. The Bible says in Jeremiah, it's not in man that walks, even though we have the ability to actually take steps forward. But the Bible says it's not in man that walks to direct his steps. It's not in him. We need God's direction. As much as we think that we're in control and charge and we can see the way clearly, we need God. I recognize I need God this morning. I can't do it on my own. I make a mess of it. Can God redirect you? Does God get to alter your plans? You know, as you're getting closer to God, you know the old song that says, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look forth into his wonderful face. And the things of this world will grow strangely dim in light of his glory and grace. As you turn your desires towards God and you make yourself pliable in his hands, usable, God will direct you. God will lead you. You know, the most satisfying thing that you can do in life is what God wants you to do. Isn't that something, you know, uh, sometimes we think we're so in charge and control and we understand this, that, and the other. But out of all of that, the one that created us, that knows our talents, our abilities, and all the things that, that we possess, he knows how to best direct us. That's a wonderful thing. And when you give God that kind of control in your life, you're going to be happy. You're going to be satisfied. And you're going to be fulfilled. Praise God. Last question I want to ask you is, what is the value of your life? 
In Mark 8, 37, Mark 8, 37 says, Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Do you see your life as yours to run? It's my life. Bobby Brown said many years ago, it's my prerogative. My prerogative. I can do what I want to do. And if he had it all to say over again, and looking back over some of the horrible decisions that he's made that's affected other people in his life in ways that he could he can only regret as he lives the rest of his life. I'm sure he would like to get the input of somebody that's wiser than he is. And in your life, if you've made mistakes, the Bible says better is a dead or a live dog than a dead lion. As long as you're alive, there's hope. But you have to come to the recogn recogn recognition. You have to come to the realization that I need God in my life. I need God to interfere. I need God to help make my way straight. He can shine the light. The Bible says that thy word is a light unto my feet, a lamp unto my feet, and a light to my path. In other words, the steps that I take, I need God shining the light because it's dark. The Bible says, and think about the future, he says we look through a glass darkly. We don't know the future. We can surmise, we can, we can calculate by, by past events or by other people's lives and other, other calculations. But we really don't know it. We need God. I need to put my hand in my life. I need to surrender the control of my life to God. I need to allow God to lead me. And when I do that, he promises that he'll lead us. He promises you know, God's not some, 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 some God that is difficult to deal with. He says, come let us reason together. God's in the business of taking the broken pieces of our lives that we give him. Our busted plans, our messed up situations. And he can take that mess and make something beautiful. Only God can do this. But it only happens when we surrender. God does require surrender. He won't fight against you. Because that's too difficult. As you're asserting your will and your plans, as he's trying to show you something that you don't understand. Your future. But when we surrender to God, God can make something beautiful out of our lives. Do you really believe that God will judge you in the end. I mean, it really comes down to that. Because the, the desire to take control of your life and to do as uh, Liberace saying, I did it my way. Now, maybe it wasn't Liberace. But the song, nevertheless, I did it my way. I don't want to do it my way. The Bible says there's a way that seemeth right to a man. But the end thereof are the ways of... See, this is the craziest thing. I hate to be in a car or be with somebody that's in charge of where I'm going. They're driving and they have no clue what they, where they're going, but they think they, they like to make everybody think they do. Well, that's a disaster waiting to happen. And this is the same thing when we're running our lives. I know what's best. I know what I can do. I know what I... And I'm in charge and... And God just has to allow that train wreck to happen. But today, if you're listening to my voice and your life has been a train wreck and you, you only know it. There's nobody else pointing at you. It's just you. You know it's been a train wreck. God's offering you the chance to allow this experienced driver to take the helm. He knows how to get you to where you want to go. That's the thing about him. He knows exactly how to get you to where you want to be. But the question is, are you going to allow him? Are you going to, maybe you lived for God for a long time, but you've done things your way. You've done
done it your way. You've been in charge. Maybe it's time for you today to say, God, I'm giving up the helm seat. I'm giving up the driver's seat, God, because I do not need to be in charge. I need your direction. And you know, the first step is recognizing that. It's, it's you know, maybe you've made some mistakes. We all have. But it's in recognizing that without God's help, I'm mistake prone. I'm going to do it over and over. But God, I'm coming to you this morning. I'm surrendering, God. I need you in charge. I need you in charge of my life, God. I'm surrendering to you. I'm giving it all to you, God. Hallelujah, God. I'm giving it all to you. I surrender. I surrender. Hallelujah. It just brings me to my last question. Are you ready? Should the end for you be today? For somebody, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day where it all ends and, and it actually matters today. Your last day is your most important day. The Bible says as a tree falls, that is how it will lie. And that is a statement that's indicative of the way that you end your life. The Bible says the dead know nothing. And so there's nothing more to add to the record. The Bible says that your spirit goes to God who gave it when life is over. It was a combination of the spirit in that body that made man a living soul, the breath of God. But he takes it back to the end and it's recorded everything. The Bible says that the spirit of man is a candle of the Lord searching the innermost parts of you. But when it's all over, he takes it back. And he has a record of everything sealed and locked. So I ask you this question today. Are you ready? Should the end for you be today? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Should the next thing that you experience is waking up at the white throne of judgment? Are you ready? To look God in the face. Are you ready for your actions to be reviewed and, and to be judged? Are you ready is my question today. If you can answer with a resounding yes. Hallelujah. You need to talk to him this morning. Hallelujah. He's open to hear what you've got to say. He's waiting. He sent me today to speak this word to you. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Are you ready? It's a question that's not just easily answered and shrugged aside, but it's something that we answer as we talk to God and as we allow his spirit to point out, as we allow him to talk to us, as we surrender and say, God, make me ready. Make me ready. Make me ready today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Lord, I pray today that you would move in the hearts, in the lives, in the minds of each person, Lord, listening to my voice today. You know where they're at, God. You understand, Lord God. Hallelujah. The issues of their lives, God. You know, Lord, what they're passionate about, Lord God. Hallelujah, God. And you know what gets them up every morning, God. You know, Lord God, if you are the motivating factor in their lives, God. Hallelujah, Lord, if they're here to do your will, God. If they have you, Lord God, at the center, Lord God, of control of their lives. I pray, Lord, today for somebody that's wanting to surrender but doesn't know how, God, that you would move in their lives, that you would move in their hearts, God, that you would allow us to get in contact with them somehow. God, that you would move, Lord God, and draw them to you. Lord, we love you. We thank you, God, for what you're doing. We thank you, Lord God, for your peace that passes all understanding. We thank you for your purpose in our hearts, in our minds, in our lives, and for what you're doing, God. Help us to be ready. Help us to be ready, Lord, should today be the day that you make that beckoning call to our souls. And our days on earth are ended. 
I pray, Lord, today for your touch, for your anointing. I pray that you would move, Lord God, in every heart that's under the sound of my voice, God. Every person that's touched, Lord God, by what you've had to say today through me. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to be back in normal services come this Wednesday. It's our goal. And uh, praise God. We thank you for being with us today. And if you'd like to give, um, you can do so on our web website. Uh, it's greatcommissionpc.org. Greatcommissionpc.org. Or if you'd like to give on a cash app, it's dollar sign, capital G, R-E-A-T-C-P-C. -C. Praise God. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you soon. Have a great day.